When I was looking for PhD programs to enroll in, I uh, looked at, around at a lot of colleges and I was very interested in alternatives to animal testing in terms of toxicology. And nowhere else um, could I find a place where they had coupled the center like CAT that was a research center dedicated to this topic with an academic program in which you could actually study, work in a lab and get your PhD. So um, that was the major attraction to come here to Hopkins and I'm in my third year now as a student and I'm very happy. The fact is that we have some simple first level tests available for product safety evaluation. What we really have to do now is begin the process of understanding mode of action or mechanism of action depending on how you want to look at it so that we understand the biological causes that result from a challenge by a foreign chemical and the potential health consequences to humans or animals of those changes. So we've made huge progress and if one thinks of it in Escher-like terms, you start at the top, you go to the bottom and you end up at the top again, that continuous cycle and every time you go through that you have another level of understanding. We're into our third or fourth cycle with the concept of alternatives understanding more and more in depth, but still not yet at the stage where we have solved all of the problems. I feel very strongly that um, we have now reached the point at which the technology has advanced um, to a stage where we can begin to see the outlines of a non-animal testing world, uh, one in which we could identify hazard and make risk evaluations based upon a mix of in vitro, uh, in silico, and good solid epidemiology um, and I think that uh, time is ripe for a new um, a human genome type project, one in which um, we devote a lot of effort and money uh, to taking this new technology, refining it and then putting it together in a package that will allow us to do safety evaluation uh, without the use of animals. Well I think there's a number of areas that we now have enough science to begin to delve into how do we develop in vitro approaches to these topics. Developmental neurotoxicity is clearly one that's significantly important. The in vivo approach at the present time, although it works scientifically, um, you have tens of thousands of chemicals on the EPA priority list and in the last 10 years three chemicals have been evaluated. We can't wait the 30,000 years to solve these problems because by then we'll have another 30,000 or 50,000 chemicals. So the problem is how do we develop better, more efficient methods to really assess the potential hazards associated with chemical use. So it's not only developmental neurotoxicity, but it's all of the organ systems, primary systems that we have to look at have to begin to understand what are those critical events in biology that, if changed, result in a health consequence. And that's where we're beginning to focus at that level. A second level is we're introducing new kinds of chemicals, physical forms, into our repertoire. The introduction of nanotechnology and what that can lead to in toxicological experiments is clearly not yet understood or defined. So we have a huge new developing area that has a whole different set of questions besides the standard questions. So that's another area of, of real concern. Uh, and then we're introducing new mixtures of chemicals, new ways to administer chemicals, each exposing different parts of the body to different challenges. So those are the ones we want to keep ahead of. And the only way to really do that is to understand how the chemical changes biology and what the change what that change means as a consequence to health I, mean, I think cat has just begun its its role and under new leadership it will continue to develop these important areas um, 
But I think some of the principles that I learned in the three R's now have to be looked at in terms of the, the larger picture of animals for food uh, and how one goes about uh, examining this issue in a very complex situation from the industrial uh, animal producing facilities to the individual sustainable farms. Uh, where is the best approach to feed the country and the world? Uh, what is the way to degradate the environment the least or actually improve it? Uh, and where are the health concerns that come out of what we eat? So I think that the three R's has been so it will be a stepping stone to look at where we go in the future in the broader areas of uh, animals for food.